All right, so we are reviewing systems. These are all linear systems today. We will do some other kinds um, next week. So today, you should have a worksheet that looks like this, review of solving systems of linear equations, okay? And we're gonna talk about, hang on, my usual not working pen, there we go. All right, so we're gonna talk about when we have two lines, what could happen, guys? Two lines could be parallel and never intersect. Most of the time they intersect somehow, right? If you have two random lines somewhere in the world <laughs> that go on forever. Okay, so if you have two lines that intersect, you are gonna be looking for this point of intersection. And you're going to end up with an XY ordered pair. This is called a consistent system. And you are not going to have to know this vocabulary, but I will tell you. Okay. Um, if you have parallel lines, they will never intersect. So you would say no solution. Sorry, that's supposed to say no solution. I didn't write that well at all. Um, and that is called an inconsistent system. That's supposed to say S-O-L-U, okay. The other option and this is kind of weird to think about, but you could have an equation for a line and then another equation that actually is the same line. Okay, so they could be the same line and that would mean they would have many solutions. In other words, every ordered pair that worked on one would work on the other because they're the same line. And that is called, um, consistent and dependent system. Again, I'm exposing these to you, but I, we are not, I'm not gonna quiz you on that vocabulary of those names, okay? Um, the methods we're gonna talk about today are first of all just graphing two lines and finding the ordered pair where they intersect, okay? Then we're gonna do substitution. And let me give you an example. If it said um, y equals x plus two, and it said y equals 2x as our system. You could substitute the 2x in here, so you'd have 2x equals x plus 2. Does this look familiar to anybody? You would take this one and put it in here, and then you would solve, and then you would have to plug that back in and get y equals 2 times 2 or 4, and you would say they intersected an ordered pair of 2, 4. We're gonna do a whole bunch more examples of that. That was just a quick and easy. All right, then the final method we're gonna to do today is called elimination. And a down and dirty elimination question might look like x plus y equals five, x minus y equals three. This is the kind where you line them up and add them together as long as one of the variables drops out. So you would get 2x, the y's drop out, equals eight. Solve that. And then you do have to plug that back in somewhere. And solve for the other variable and then you get an ordered pair. So it should work in both equations. Four plus one is five, four minus one is three. 
Does that look familiar? Kind of, sort of? Most of you? Okay. Elimination does get more complicated where you have to multiply through by something to make one of the variables drop out. Okay, before I move on, I do want to talk about what happens when you have an inconsistent system or a same line situation when you're doing substitution or elimination. I'll just have you write this down and then I'll show you an example. If you get a true statement, that means many solutions which means it's really the same line. For example, if it said x plus y, whoops, okay, all right, x plus 7y equals 15. And then the other equation said negative x minus 7y equals negative 15. When you added them together, you'd get 0 equals 0, which is true. Okay? That would mean they're really the same line. Pretty obvious, yes, that those are the same line? Okay. They won't all be that obvious. But the other option is if you get a false statement, for example, 7 equals 5, then there is no solution. And what does that mean about the lines again? How can two lines never intersect? Parallel. Yeah, they're parallel. And that might look like um, y equals x minus 5 and y equals x plus 4. If you did substitution on those and you put this in here, you would have x plus 4 equals x minus 5. When you subtract an x off both sides, you get 4 equals negative 5. That's not true, so those lines are parallel. You might be able to just look and see they both have a slope of positive 1, right? Everybody see what I'm talking about right there? If you had to graph those, they both have a slope of positive 1, and they have different y-intercepts, so they'd be parallel, okay? But you won't always notice that, and so I just wanted to give you an example. And if you don't write all that down, I'm fine with whatever you fit on there. Need another minute? Can we keep going? Okay. Um, all right, so let's start by graphing. Tell me how to graph this first one. Cheyenne, can you help me this one right here? I'll do this one in red. Good job. Okay, so we start at seven on the Y, up three and four to the right. We could also do what? We could go down three and back four. Everybody okay with that? I can't see this graph paper well. I'm So I hope I'm halfway accurate. And of course I can't draw a line, so we'll see how this goes. Any questions about the backwards business? All right, then the other line, uh, this is a, a sheet in the back you had to pick up, sorry. Um, Natalie, can you tell me how to graph this other one? Yes, down two and one to the right. The other option would be to go up two and one to the left. You can't do two negatives, right? Because that would make it a positive slope. So you could go up two, one to the left. Now we want to find where these intersect, so I'm going to keep going up two and one to the left. And yep, I don't think mine's working because I messed up something on this one. Up three and over four, down 
three and over four. Yep, the red one, this red dot was wrong on mine. And one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Okay, two of my dots are wrong. I knew I was going to do that because I can't see. All right, so when you got them accurately graphed on your graph paper, did you find an ordered pair where they intersected? And we need the name of that ordered pair. Remember, it's X first, so we went left four and then up four. Is that right, guys? Any questions about how we do those? What would you have to do first on this number three, probably? Solve for y would be the easiest way to do this. So if we subtract 2x over to the other side. And on the second one, we would need to subtract an x. And then divide everything by negative 3. which makes that one y equals negative 1x divided by negative 3 would be a 1 third x positive. Is everybody okay with that one? And then negative 6 divided by negative 3 back here is plus 2. So this was negative 1 divided by negative 3 became a slope of positive 1 third. All right, I'm going to graph those. Do I even need to graph those? You guys get how to do this? Start down at negative 5, down 2 and over 1, or up 2 and back 1. I'm draw that real fast. And then this one started up at 2. It was going up 1 and right 3, or down 1 and back 3. Ooh, I think I was halfway accurate. Are they intersecting at negative 3, 1? Did anyone else get that? I went fast, but could you have all done that? Okay. The homework tonight is in Delta Math. Um, next we have substitution. Substitution is literally what it says. You're putting somebody in for somebody else. We can't deal with two variables when we solve an equation, so we need to substitute for one of them. What is the easy setup for this problem? What would be easy to substitute? It already says y is equal to a negative 2x plus 15, right? So we're going to take what it's already solved for, the y of the other one, out. So we will have negative 4x plus 5 times y equals 5. But instead of y, we're going to write a negative 2x plus 15, and then we're going to solve. But that's only half of our answer. Let's see, negative 4x minus 10x plus, is that 75, guys? 5 times 15? Subtract 75, divide, and I get 5. I'm probably going way too fast. I'll stop. Could you have got there? Okay. Then we need to finish the question by finding the y value because we need an ordered pair when we're done. We already know that the x is 5. But if we go back up here where we started, it said y equals negative 2 times x plus 15, and we now know x is 5. So if we just plug it back in there, we get y equals negative 10 plus 15, or also 5. Did someone else get that? So you could check it in both equations. If you put 5, 5 in the second one, you'd end up with negative 20 plus positive 25 equals 5, which is also true. It's always good to check it, because Hofbauer quickly often makes mistakes. 
Uh, this one, this is, I just put this one on here because it's a little bit different setup. Do you remember what you do here? If they're both equal to y, we can just set them equal to each other. Does that make sense? So you're going to put maybe this in for that y, however you want to think of it. So it would say 2x minus 2 equals negative 4x plus 4. You're replacing one of the y's with what it's equal to. Um, if I add 4x, I'll get 6x. If I add 2 over this way, I got 1. And then which equation do you want me to put it in? Doesn't matter. If I put the 1 back in there, it'll say y equals 2 times 1 minus 2, which is 0, right? And if I put in a 1 in the first one, I would get out a 0, so it seems right. Uh, is there one more substitution? I think the last substitution is a special case here. If I, this one says y equal, you don't usually use substitution unless one of them is already solved for either x or y, it doesn't have to be y. So if I put the bottom negative 3x plus 4 back in for the y in the first equation, it would look like that. Is everybody with me? negative 9x minus 3 times the quantity, which is equal to y down here, negative 3x plus 4. As soon as I distribute, the 9's x's cancel out or make 0, so I have negative 12 equals 4. Is that a no solution or many solutions? Yeah, this is a no solution. And what does it mean if two lines never intersect and have a solution? They'd be parallel lines, okay? I'm just trying to tie that together in your head. All right, and then we have the method called elimination. This is Hofbauer's favorite. You good? Okay. Uh, oh, we don't have any nice ones. No, we don't have any nice ones. Okay. Solve by elimination. I, I made a nice one for you where you could just add. Remember in the notes a minute ago? You can't just add here. Remember, the point is to make either X or Y drop out. I use, when I explained this and I taught Algebra 1, I said at, at the time many years ago, anybody ever seen the show called fairly odd parents, there was, I would say, we need to call on the algebra fairy, okay? What do I wish was in front of this X so that the X's would drop out when I added them together? A positive 9. We could also make the Y's drop out if we multiplied this guy down here by a 4 so that it was a negative 8. I'm going to go with the 9. It's not actually the easier of the two, but that's what... I would have seen first. So I'm going to multiply that top equation through all the way by a 9. Make sure you do that all the way through. It'll become 9x plus 72y, which I didn't write. Equals 9 times negative 20 is a negative 180. That's a lovely number. I'm not going to rewrite this one because they're sort of kind of lined up. I'm going to add these two now so that the x's drop out. Negative 9x plus 9x here is 0x's. Negative 2y plus 72y is positive 70y. And a negative 30 plus negative 180 is negative 210. Then when I divide, I get a lovely negative 3. Okay, so we actually solve for y first, so our ordered pair has a negative 3. How do we find the x? 
Yeah, we have to plug it back in somewhere. I'm going to go with the first equation. You can use any equation, even the new one you wrote if you were really excited about that. So this one said x plus 8y equals negative 20, but I'm putting in for the y a negative 3, which gives me a negative 24. And when I add 24 to both sides, I got 4. Did anyone else get 4, negative 3? Okay. I think this one might be a special case. Um, what would you like to do to make X or Y drop out here? The bottom one by a 2 would make this a 14X and a negative 14X. Everybody good? So this one stays the same. The bottom one, when I multiply it all by 2, becomes a negative 14x, a negative 16y, and on the other side, a negative 18. Anybody see what's going to happen here? This is going to be 0, and this is going to be 0. That means they're exactly the same line. And what we write then is many solutions. I don't really like the answer any number because these are ordered pairs and you would have to find ordered pairs that actually work on that equation. Does that make sense? It's, it's a line on top of a line. So you'd have to find ordered pairs that worked in that equation. We could do that by substituting in random numbers, but we're just going to write many solutions. By the way, that's called a dependent system. But you don't have to know that. Okay. Um, all right. What can I wish for here? Is there any way to make a 3 into a 2 or a 2 into a 5? No. Does anybody remember how we do this? Yeah. Or the 2 and the 5. Anybody pick. Do you want to get rid of the X's or the Y's? It's no easier for one or the other this time. You want to get rid of the y's? Okay. So I need these y's to be multiples of the same. I need them to be the same number. So one is a negative 2 and one is a positive 5. It's kind of a common denominator thing. What do 2 and 5 both go into? 10. So I need to make multiply the top one by what to get a 10y or a negative 10y? Okay, and the bottom one, I need to have a 10y, so I need to multiply that one by 2. All right, the top becomes 15x minus 10y equals 25. The two things that will kill you on these are not multiplying all the way through on both sides and making sign mistakes. And a third thing, if you don't write real neat, You'll sometimes think you wrote an X and it's a Y, and then you plug it back in for the wrong number. I do that all the time. Okay, when I multiply the bottom one by 2, I get 4X plus 10Y equals negative 6. So then I can add and the Ys will drop out. So I end up with 19X equals 19, so X equals 1. The pain here is that... It, there's no nice place to plug it back in, right, to find the y. I'm just going to pick the bottom one. So I'd have 2, I know x is 1, plus 5y equals negative 3. That would be subtracting 2 from both sides gives me y equals negative 1. Did anybody else get that? Okay. How are you feeling? Do you need me to do number 10? Uh, okay, let's, let's go with no, but tell me what you might make. Let's say the X's I want to drop out. What could I make 8 and 10 into? I could multiply this one by 10 and this one by 8. I could also make them both into 40, right? 
So I would multiply this guy through by a 5. That would make that negative 40. And then this one through by a 4, and it would make it positive 40. It would have worked if you did. I'm going to multiply the top one by 10 and the bottom one by 8. Okay? You just get bigger numbers along the way. All right. I will let you guys tell me that you're okay with that one. All right. Last thing, right? Is this the last thing? Oh, there is one. I might skip that one for today. We'll see. How am I doing on time? Are we done at quarter after? Okay, 16 after, we're pretty good. All right, let me help you with this real quick. Uh, I think we did a couple of these at the beginning of the year. When you have, well, I, I know we did, but a less than or greater than, you used a dashed or dotted line. Does that sound familiar? If you have a greater than or equal to, or a less than or equal to, you use a solid line. And then I don't have a lot of room. I'm going to write this down at the bottom. Anytime it's greater or greater than or equal to, you shade above the line. If it's a less or less than or equal to, you shade below the line. I know you probably learned you have to test a point to figure out which side you shade on. And that works as well, but I find this is easier. As long as you solve for Y, this will work. All right, so number 11 is all set up for us. Tell me how to start. Dot it, negative 6, and then I go up. 7 and over 3. This is going to be a struggle for me. Dotted or solid line for that one? This is a dotted or dashed line because it had less than, not equal to. Now, a less than, this is a less than, in case you're not sure which is which, that was these. A less than means you shade below the line. Now, where's below that line? Which side? Yeah, it's where the y-axis points below, so it's over here. That was a less than, so we made it dashed, and a less than meant we shaded below. All right, this one is also a less, but it is a less than or equal to, which means we need a solid line, but we're still going to shade below. Okay, that one starts at negative 1, and then it goes up 2 and over 3. It is a solid line this time. And it was a less, so we're shading below. So the area that we have double shaded is in here. Does that everybody see what I'm talking about? It was below the green one and below the purple one. Now, sometimes the point where they intersect would work, but it doesn't this time as an answer for, because this was a dotted line, it isn't included there. Delta Math asks you to find one ordered pair that works. So you need to give me one ordered pair that's down here shaded in red. Anything down there will work. Yep, what do you got? Positive 6, negative 3 maybe? Is actually on the line? Okay, I'm going to trust you. It doesn't look like on mine 6-3 is it looks like mine goes through 6-2, but I probably did something wrong. Oh, yeah, I didn't go up 2 that time, did I? Okay, so mine is wrong. Mine's not graphed right, but we're going to go with it. 
Um, I'm going to put down like 6, negative 3 because that's clearly down in here. Does that make sense, guys? Delta Math will take anything as long as it's within that double shaded region. All right. Last question I'm going to do today because I want you to have time to work on Delta Math. Even if you... Um, I think there is a word problem, so you might have to not finish this assignment until Monday, but... Um, we're going to need to solve for y here before we graph these. So what do we need to do first? Can I subtract the 5x over to the other side? So it'll say negative 3y is less than negative 5x plus 15. Now, the next step needs to be divide by a negative 3. Does anybody remember the magical rule about dividing by a negative when you have an inequality? Yeah, you have to flip the inequality. Because you're changing the sign of every number, I bet some of you never knew why it is. Because you're changing the sign of everything, you have to flip the inequality as well. So dividing by a negative here makes that a positive y. Dividing by a negative over here will make that a positive 5 thirds x for our slope. Dividing by a negative back here makes that negative 5. And so we have to flip the inequality because we changed the sign of everything. All right, solid or dotted for that one? It is a dotted line. And I always look back at the original one to make sure I didn't lose an equal to somewhere. And it is a greater than which means we're going to shade above the line. So we start down at negative 5. We go up 5 and over 3. And I'm not going to keep going. I'm just going to make a rough sketch here. And it was a greater than, so we want the points above that line. It was? Yeah, well, we flipped it to become a greater than. Okay, yes, yes, yes. All right, I'm running out of room. The next one is we would have 6y is less than or equal to a negative x plus 36 if I subtracted it over. Do we have to flip the signs on this one? No, because we're just dividing by a positive. Everybody okay? So we'd have y is less than or equal to a negative 1 6x six plus 6. Did I make a mistake anywhere? So that one starts up at 6 goes down 1 and over 6. Is it solid or dotted, guys? It is a solid line. And it is a less than, so I'm shading below it. So the double shaded area would be below this one and above this one. So, anybody throw an ordered pair out there? Yeah, zero, zero seems to work. Something, you know, negative five, two, anything. Any questions? All right, I'm going to skip this one for today, even though I think you do have a question in Delta Math that is word problems and just tell you to get started on this. It's not due until Monday or so, because tonight I want you to make sure you're done with all the Delta math that has to do with logs, okay? Now, I'm gonna stop recording, but if you have questions that you need, somebody's working on Delta